Hey everyone, welcome back. The multiple award-winning film Aquitzeramo tells the story of Salvador, a gay Mexican elder who has lost his partner for 15 years. And after inviting his partner's estranged son to attend his funeral in Mexico, family secrets are exposed and identities and perceptions are challenged. Let's take a sneak peek of the film Aquitzeramo. ¿Tú eres Salvador? Sí. Solo vengo por lo que me dejó mi papá. ¿Cuánto tiempo estuvieron juntos? Casi. Once años. Joining us to share more on the film Acuizeramo, please welcome director, writer, and producer Miguel Angel Caballero and co-executive producer Neda Martinez. Hello and welcome. Hi, Irina. Thank you for having us. Thank bueno, you. Congratulations. Happy, healthy new year. Happy new year. Yeah, I, I, I've been greeting everybody with a happy, healthy because you don't have to affirm and put it in this space. But um, congratulations on uh, now streaming on HBO Max. Let's start there. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's you know, it's funny because I, I, I approached Nada, I think it was like two years ago and I told her about what I wanted to do. And she said, so what, where do you want this? How do you see this happening? And I said, well, I wanted you know, to shoot it. I wanted to have a festival route. I want to inspire people to open up a dialogue about this topic that we rarely talk about. Mm -hmm. And I would love for it to end up on HBO. Right. And thanks to Nada's work on the film, <laughs> here we are in 2022. Woo! Bravo, bravo. And so, you know, we can't start without mentioning all these wonderful awards. I don't think we can mention them all, but you've been winning awards since 2020. And um, and God knows that list is long. I mean, you've got Best Short, American Pavilion. I'm just going to name a few at Cannes Film Festival, Imagen Awards in 2020. You've got uh, 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 Sedona International Film Festival. Um, and I'll maybe mention one more. Uh, let's see, we'll give it the Silver Image Award in Chicago. Just just to mention that, you know, just so that our audience recognizes that this film has toured internationally. It really has. And Rena, you know, honestly, like even when Nada and I talked about it, I, the passion was there to make a film of an, a gay elder. And like I mentioned, it's a topic that we don't talk about. And my dream was just to premiere it festival wise, you know, at, at the Morelia International, which is the hometown, uh, which is the state where Aquitramo is in. And that's it. And we thought, you know, it's going to be mostly in Spanish, although we do have somebody from Chicago that goes over to Mexico. So and we are U.S. based filmmakers, but nobody's really going to get it. And we're going to be OK with that if we do one film festival. That's fine. And then, Rena, it just started catching fire festival after festival. And we just couldn't believe the amount of awards, audience awards, everything, because I think it resonated to a truth that, like I said, in our community, we don't talk about, and we it opened up, you know, a dialogue about, let's talk about queer elders, let's talk about gay elders, like, what about that? They're forgotten in our daily lives, but like, let's have this conversation. And I think because of that, it just, the film took a mind of its own and it just, you know, it went off and, and left us all behind. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're all catching up now. So I'm just going to introduce Nita to our audience in, in just uh, recognizing her uh, for all of the work that she's done. I mean, you've already acknowledged her, but uh, we know her as a documentary filmmaker, and this is not a documentary. I mean, you know, uh, the last time we had you on was for Decade of Fire. We've had you on for Lucky. Uh, I know you just recently worked with the Young Lords, uh, the documentary, uh, The Takeover. And so what, what compelled you to take on a short film? A well, Miguel, oh, yeah. <laughs> well um, Miguel is, is my family. Miguel is my secret weapon LA family. And actually we've had a relationship for probably 15 years, if not more. We met when I was on the board of the National Association of Latino Independent Producers. And in fact, this is the second uh, feature project which Miguel is connected to, for which I serve as a co-executive producer. So um, I, I just believe in, in the collaborative um, team spirit, the aesthetic, the quality, the urgency, the, the wisdom that Miguel and his colleagues bring to the table. And he knows that I'm always, you know, manos a la obra, what can I do to help? That's yeah. beautiful. I yeah. know who you are and, and it's so lovely we're so fortunate to have a producer like yourself uh, accessible to us and i say that endearingly <laughs> she's she does the same for me too <laughs> but, <I try. laughs> she, and so but uh getting back to the story of of Aquitzeramo, um i i, I do want to share that um there was this uh interesting conclusion that really came unexpectedly and you know if you'd like to mention it you can but um just the the narrative itself and the the colors in it the visual aesthetics I, it's so beautifully made it's so beautifully made thank you yeah and i think what what you're referring to is that the sort of you know reveal in the end that you know you know and it happens in many families and in my family for example i've had uncles that have just you know we knew they were gay and they've just vanished from the family because it was easier to run away than to be judged and criticized and you know not accepted for who they were. So um, in this way, that's what the one of the protagonist's father does. He leaves because the wife tells him to go because of who he is and don't come around our child anymore. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the son thinks that he was abandoned until he gets a call that says, you know, your father was living in this small town for 15 years, he passed away. And I was his lover. So he goes there and he rediscovers like, you know, his father and who he was through his father's partner. And at the very end, which is what you're talking about, Rena, we realize that the one of the last scenes that he has, the son was also gay. So what I really wanted to do there is just show how, you know, shame within our community and families could just drive us away because of, of the unknown because of not the fear of not being accepted, the fear of being shunned from the tribe. So in the end, we realized that the father was gay and he ran away because he didn't want to tell his son because he thought he wouldn't accept him. And the son was also gay and he never told his father because he thought his father would never accept him. So you have this whole life that just was, was broken and it was it never you know had a life because of the shame and fear. Yeah, and um, I think right now we're living in a day and age where healing really needs to be at the forefront. And um, there's something in your film um, that also uh, mesmerized me, which was this that scene where I guess his dad felt his spirit was moving on, um, or at least that's how I perceived it, right? Because it, it, it left it open for interpretation with the um, the folklore, which you can please share a little bit about the, the folkloric aspect that was incorporated from a magic realism. So oh, he was so beautiful. I'm, and you can tell I was very excited to watch <laughs> this film. So, so we have, we do have like a sort of surreal moment with, with what's traditionally from the state of Michoacan, from where Acuizaramo is, of the Baile de los Viejitos, the dance of the elderly. And that's one of the most traditional Michoacan dances where, you know, you put on um, old person mask and you do a dance, uh, sort of like in the film. But like digging back, uh, my producing partner, uh, our other producing partner, Luis, uh, he we kind of dug back into what it meant and that dance was performed by wise elders and shamans before mm -hmm. and what it was is it was a link from once somebody passed it was a dance that was performed to help the spirit from the physical world into the spiritual world 
So the father in this case refuses to leave until he sees that there's peace and acceptance between his partner and his son. And as soon as that happens, the dance starts happening and he just transcends. And that was like the whole point. But like you said, Rina, this could be completely interpreted into a hundred ways and they're all correct. And 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 that, and that's beautiful. Go ahead, Dana. I know you're going to say. Well, no, I, I just wanted to share it, and because you know M Miguel is working on a triptych, so this is the second piece. There was a first piece, but I don't know where you can find it. But broken sunflower hearts, also yeah, with the yeah. Chicago connection, which is no connect, which is no accident, because that is my hometown too. And then um, he's also developing, building on this body of work to develop a feature, for which I also hope hope to be supportive of. Yes. That's wonderful. I love this. And thank you so much for bringing it here to our audience. Um, I think it's important that we continue to have our stories uh, streamed and or viewed on a broader level. Mm -hmm. So I'm so excited that it's streaming on HBO Max. Yes. Congratulations to everyone involved. Thank and you. Uh, you guys, once again, Aquitzeramo is streaming on HBO Max right now. And if you're interested in more information on the film and their future projects, you can visit aquitzeramofilm.com. And on IG, you can also visit them at aquitzeramo underscore film. All right, stay tuned. Bobby C's Weekly Sports Roundup is coming up next.